they're just great hard workers and they always are pushing to be better. Do you think one day you'll try to push to be one of them, maybe be on the team? Yes, definitely. And how about you? What's the best part about being here today? Um, just seeing them and like being able to experience this. How long did it take you to get here? I understand you guys are from Ohio. It took 10 hours. What time did you wake up this morning? Um, like 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, that's insane. That's some dedication. Thank you girls for your time. Now, we do also have a fan here that came all the way from Florida. Tell us how long it took you to get here. Actually, I was lucky. I was vacationing in D.C. and I, they announced the parade and I was just like, all right, I got to jump on a bus and head on up to New York. What is it like being here today? I mean, describe the energy um, here. Uh, this is unlike anything I've ever experienced. This is amazing. Like Just the energy, the excitement, the young kids, that's, that's really cool to see. So the whole thing, the whole experience. And who are you most excited to see? Uh, probably Allie Krieger, because I live in Florida, so obviously her club team's Orlando Pride, so I'm here just excited to see her, Ashlyn, and, and Alex represent club. Are you a soccer player yourself? No, a fan. Just You're a fan. fan. You're yeah. a fan. How do these women inspire you in your day-to-day -day life? Uh, so I grew up watching the 99ers and all the way just watching them, just their their perseverance and just being a woman in sports and, and trying to just overcome any barrier that's put in front of them. And they have done an amazing job. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. We have another group of very excited fans here, very spirited and excited fans. How are you girls feeling being here today? Amazing. How do you feel being here today? Oh, I'm so What's the best part about this? <laughs> to see them in real life, because you always see them on the screen, to see them actually here, because they're real people, and you can see them and make eye contact with them, they can wave at you, is so cool. It is pretty cool. So who were you most excited to see? Everyone. <laughs> I can't pick one. What is it about these women that make you so excited? Are you soccer players yourself? Yes, we're all on the same team. So when you watch them, you watch them Sunday, what is the best part of watching them that you can maybe apply to your soccer game? We really feel like how close they are, so like it kind of like relates to us because we're really tight-knit and like it helps with the bond on the field. Thank you so much. Can I get one more excited cheer for All right, so we are going to hang out with these awesome fans and we'll send it back to you guys. Oh, Jenna, thank you so much. So excited out there and a program and a note. If you're looking to watch Let's Make a Deal, head to our sister station, WLNY TV 1055. All right, let's head back out to the parade route. Cindy Shu talking with more fans, soaking up all of the excitement of the Canyon of Heroes. Cindy? Oh, it's been so much fun out here. Um, we keep, okay, just because we're going to keep looking back because floats keep going by and we just keep seeing player after player. We saw Rose Lavelle who made that second goal. It was very exciting. Another up float just went by. Oh, my goodness.
people around you, they're supporting everybody. It's girls supporting girls, everybody supporting them. It's, it's amazing what they've done here. Yeah. What does it mean to be here with your little sister? I think it's going to make a big impression on her, especially since it's her first parade. Oh, wait a minute. Let, let's look over here. We got a lot of... Cindy, you have a, uh, a great float right in front of your camera right there, of course, highlighted by our governor, Andrew Cuomo, standing there. But also, you know, Kristen Press is on that float along with our local favorite, Tobin Heath, who we've been talking about. And Crystal Dunn right at the beginning there at the front of that float. Ali Long, Tierna Davidson, Adriana French, Abby Dalkamper, Morgan Bryan, all on that float. So you have got a star-studded float right in front of you right now. The kids have got to be absolutely floored <laughs> to see these stars <laughs> right in front of them like this. And it looks like the float has stopped for a quick second so everybody can start yelling to uh, their favorite athletes who are on board this float right now but this is just so great great to see uh alex you want to jump in i was just going to say I'm, I'm talking here with trish who played with some of these players growing up in new jersey and i know kelly o'hara isn't from new jersey but tell me what makes her you were saying such a dynamite player yeah, um, my first experience playing with Kelly was uh, playing for Sky Blue, um, and it was our first scrimmage. And um, I was we were playing a 4-4-2, and I had hadn't played a 4-4-2 in a while. So I was playing outside midfield. She was playing outside back, and I never played with an outside midfielder. So I was like, Kelly, I'm not really sure what to do here. Just kind of guide me. And she just kept talking to me the whole time, and she just really told me where to go, what to do, everything like that. And and just by her communication, she made me look good. Um, but she's she's just such a fit player, um, and she's such a tough player, and to play out. Outside back in this formation, you just have to drive all day. And, and she's got that stamina and she's got that grit, and she's a great defender as well. Tobin, you were saying, is excellent as well. What was some of the best moments you've had with her on the field? Um, gosh, Tobin, I mean, just everything that she does with the ball is just magic. It's like sometimes you're playing against her, you're trying to defend her, and you just get caught watching like how incredible she is with the ball and just how confident and the swagger that she has is really special. How do you think they inspire the teammates that they play with now? I think they all lift each other up. Um, I think this, this bond that this team had it says it's a really special bond and it was so evident through the way that they played and carried on through the tournament and you know we saw them on social media we saw them celebrating goals and it's just so obvious how bad they wanted this not for themselves but for the, each other and you know working at Rutgers now as a coach we look at some of the players that have gone through your program and now are standing on the world stage yeah we, we have a lot of Rutgers ties in this World Cup um, you know obviously Carly Lloyd and she's in the Rutgers Hall of Fame she's two-time FIFA player of the world um, we have Chantel Swaby, who's a current player with us now. She was representing the Jamaican side. Um, Shannon Wohler, a former Rutgers player, was on the uh, Canada roster. Um, and then on the broadcast side, Alexi Lawless, who was a Rutgers men's soccer player and U.S. men's national team player, he did a great job on the broadcast, along with former Rutgers uh, women's soccer coach and Canadian national team player Karina LeBlanc. So obviously a lot of connections there. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about how much grit and athleticism goes into this. And you were saying you didn't know the details of their schedule because they trained so hard. But give me just a roundabout of what it's like to get out there and play at this type of level and the practice it takes to get there. Oh, gosh. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, there's so many sacrifices they've made. And just the detail that goes into their preparation. And, you know, every single member on that national team staff deserves credit because, obviously, you know, we see what the girls do on the field. But, you know, from strength and conditioning to nutrition to fitness to uh, periodization, and, and there's so much that goes into it that, you know, it's hard for us to understand. But How soon after do you just jump right in and start training all over again? I'm sure they'll take some time <laughs> off. Uh, you know, they, I mean, they've been, they, they've been gearing up for this tournament for quite some time. So, you know, they deserve some time off, relaxed a little bit, but most of them will get right back into it. So I know that you've, you know, won in different varieties in your career as well. You've played at a professional level. Can you put into words the feeling as you're standing there and you've accomplished everything you have finally set out to do? Oh gosh, it's 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 indescribable. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs and adversity through these journeys, and I think there's often times where you wonder, like, hey, is this really worth it? You know, I'm I'm really putting a lot into this. Am I going to get what I want out of it? And then 
I mean, just look at these girls on these floats right now, realizing the fruits of their labor. Like, yeah, it's absolutely worth it. As one ton of confetti falls down <laughs> around you and your name is memorialized in the cement in New York City because they each get a stone plaque, anyone that participates in a ticker tape parade. That's crazy. So they'll be there forever for history to see. What about Carly Lloyd, another New Jersey girl? Yeah, I mean, Carly, what she's done for the U.S. women's soccer team over the years has been absolutely incredible. Um, numerous World Cups, numerous Olympics, um, and she's just such a hard worker, you know. She she puts her head down and works, and, and she's really, really worked hard at everything that she's accomplished. And, I mean, she's done amazing things for the U.S. women's national team. As a female athlete yourself, you hear these little girls talking about what an inspiration for you, how does that make you feel? For me, that's that's the most moving part of this parade. You know, we see these little girls and, and Alex Morgan goes by and they're getting choked up and they're inspired. And, you know, I'm almost crying over here because that's really inspirational to me. But, you know, I, I coach um, a U10 soccer team at the PDA and, and I know that they idolize these girls. And just to know that they can have such positive role models for me is very important. And the excitement felt not only in our city but around the world supporting this. We were just seeing some of the pictures of our viewers that are there along the parade route. Uh, if you have them or if you're watching us hashtag saluting the champions we want to include you in our broadcast as well but you see these girls hugging and you see their social media posts themselves they truly seem like a family they are absolutely and that's how you know that's how most soccer teams are you're a family and mm -hmm. you're you're sacrificing for one another you pick someone falls down you'll pick them up but the bond between this team is is very evident and Jenna DeAngelis has been along the parade route, and I think there's a float coming by you right now, Jenna. There are. The players just came by us, and let me tell you, this crowd got so loud and so excited when they saw their favorite players. I actually want to go over to some of our young fans here. We've been talking to them all morning. We have fans from Florida, Ohio, Delaware, you name it. We have a group of girls here that are actually a little closer to home. Hey, girls. How, what was that like when the players came by? Amazing. inspiration to me. Yeah, she was right up weaving at you girls. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. What's the best part about being here today? Just seeing oh, all yeah. of them. And, and like oh, everyone I, come together because we're all here for the team. And seeing how much people are like us and love soccer and love this team. So you girls are soccer players. What do these girls mean to you? How do they inspire you? They make us work harder and yeah. like, show us that we can do what we love when we get older. So. Absolutely. I, and what about you? What were you saying? They inspire me to follow my dreams. And I they, inspire they inspire you to follow your dreams. Did you girls watch the game on Sunday? Yeah. yeah. What was the best part of the game? Well, I think seeing them celebrate and win together. How about that winning goal? Yes. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, girls. Let's go back over to some more fans here. They are very spirited here this morning. Hey, guys, how are you doing? What's the best part about this for you? Um, my best, my favorite part about it is the float and the music. The players just came by. What was that like? Um, that was, was that exciting. was that was like that was like meeting my favorite person in the world. Are they your favorite people? Kind of. Where are you guys from? New Jersey. Um, New Jersey. New Jersey. That's awesome. Are you having a good time? Yes. yes. Thank you guys so much. Let's head over and talk to some more people here. I know we have a mom here that has a pretty cool getup. Can we grab you over here? Woo! Tell us about how this is like for you as a mom. You have girls here that play soccer. Um, it's wonderful. We came from New Jersey uh, last night to come see the parade because my daughter and her friends were, have been watching the whole series, so we're really excited to be here. And, you know, these girls are saying that these players inspire them. As a mom, what is it like to have role models for your daughter? They're great role models because there's not a lot of good ones out there, and these girls have been fantastic for them. So. What was it like for your daughter and for you seeing the team come by? Amazing. Once in a lifetime. We're so excited that we could be here. Awesome. We hope you enjoy the parade. We actually have a mother over here. Your mom. You got, oh, let's go over to the floats here. Every time a float comes by, this crowd screams and is so excited. There's Governor Cuomo on this float here right now. Just a really exciting day down here. And Crystal Dunn on this float as well. You can see them waving, the girls yelling. We've got a homegrown player passing by here. So let's send it back to you guys for now. We want to continue to talking to these fans out here. 
Okay, Jenna, thanks so much. Great job as always down there uh, on the parade route, as you again can see the excitement here. Ali Long, you can see her in the front there with the uh, medal around her neck. And uh, there's Megan Rapino right there. You talk about the breakout breakout superstar of this tournament, whether it was dominating a game after game and just being at the forefront for this U.S. team, the spokesperson, the vocal leader, and holding that World Cup trophy in her hands right now, uh, the signature purple hair, and you talk about a champion. Let's listen in for a quick second. cheers the applause for the girls of the team pretty incredible so many young women out there celebrating this remarkable victory as their heroes come by and you can see that the floats are decorating gold and very symbolic of uh, this huge win the stellar run and you mentioned mega rapino winning the golden ball too yep. given to the best overall player so congratulations to her and the uh, golden boot given to the yep. top, top score, score. So <laughs> So she wins it again. So Megan Rapino, just such a superstar in this. And she also got, uh, of course, player of the match honors for the win over France, the win over Spain, the final uh, win over the Netherlands. Uh, she essentially took those games over, to be honest with you. And it began in that round of 16 versus Spain, breaking a 1-1 tie. 76 minute. She comes in, scores, and then the U.S. is, is on their way. She scored both goals yeah. in the quarterfinal. 2-1 mm -hmm. win versus France, the host nation. A lot of people thought maybe if there was an upset in store, that could potentially be it with France, as I said, being on home turf there. That didn't work. And then scored the game winner in the final, uh, breaking a nil-nil uh, tie versus the Netherlands. And she is, uh, first again, player the, to score yes. from a penalty kick in regulation play and, and first player to win the Golden Boot and the Golden Ball at the Women's World Cup final. She is just so remarkable. Oldest player to win the Golden Boot and Golden Ball at a Women's World Cup final. And she has more play to go. She just strives for the best each and every time. And she says she's ready to go. Yeah, I think yeah. some people might be wondering, well, how did she get the golden boot for top score with six goals if Alex Morgan also had six goals? Well, they basically, the tiebreaker is who played less minutes, who scored the most goals in the less time on the field. And uh, Rapino, of course, had less time on the pitch. So she was able to, to win that golden boot. Jessica Moore is uh, at City Hall waiting for basically everybody to arrive for the big ceremony and the handing over of the keys to the city. Let's join her real quickly to see what's happening. Happening now. Jessica. Well, Chris and Mary, we are showing you right now the crowd and the parade as it's going by. People have been out here all morning long, so they sacrificed a front row seat to the parade so they could be here for this grand finale moment. But they have been able to watch it on the jumbotrons. You see a sea of red, white, and blue. So many soccer jerseys out here with fans who have been waiting for hours to watch the team receive those keys to the city. And let me explain this to you. This place is going to be packed. The city released the tickets earlier this week and they sold out within minutes. So lots of people wanting to be out here today. People of all ages from all over the country actually. We're going to hear from Mayor de Blasio and First Lady Shirlane McRae. We're also going to hear from lots of the favorite team members. We love all of our women's soccer team, but we're going to hear from Megan Rapino. We're going to hear um, from so many others right now or I should say once they get here after the parade route. We saw rehearsals happening earlier today. There's going to be a band. There's going to be a vocalist singing the national anthem. We're going to have so many festivities out here. Key to the city. You can see behind me there's a DJ trying to keep everyone excited because as we have all been showing our viewers and people at home have been watching the parade, these folks have been here patiently waiting for the team to arrive. But if you can see the, on the stage behind me, you see all the white chairs set up with a sea of flags behind. All the team will be sitting right there as they get the key to the city. The DJ here reminding everyone to uh, stay hydrated, put on your sunscreen because as you mentioned earlier it is hot out here but not hot enough to keep people from coming we're going to bring you this ceremony live it's scheduled to happen at about 10 30 but one of the event staff told me it's always fluid as you well know chris and mary these things will be contingent on whatever the parade wraps up you might remember in 2015 this ceremony went a bit long but i'm told that will not be the case today the girls are leaving the ceremony, strutting, heading straight to the airport to catch a flight to LA as their victory tour continues. For now, we're live at City Hall. Jessica Moore, CBS 2 News.
All right, Jessica, thanks so much. Yes, of course, big award show in Los Angeles tonight as their victory tour continues. It's been three days of celebration. When will it end? <laughs> Who knows? Will the jet lag finally get to them? Nothing can stop this team at this so. time, Mary. I mean, if you ask me, they've got uh, plenty more left in the tank. They'd probably love to get a couple more games out there if they possibly could. We just uh, want to keep them in New York City. There's no party like a party in New York. And thanks for watching, everyone, as you're watching right now on CBS2, on CBSN New York, on CBS CBSNewYork.com and on KYW. And we'll continue to cover this throughout the morning as we're taking a live look at this saluting of the champions parade. It's really historic in so many ways when we're talking about this women's team getting a second ticker tape parade in the city, the last one in 2015. And then if we go back, I mean, the first woman to be honored was Amelia Earhart. So if you think about history, and that was in 1928 and 1930. There's a parade in her honor as she was welcomed home. And so much celebrating still to be done today, Alex. And we have seen the most goals in a single game, 13 to 0 against Thailand. Highest margin of victory. Jill Ellis, the coach, the first women coach to win two World Cups. Most overall wins. You saw the sign there, 2019 World Champions. I'm here with Trish, who is a coach at Rutgers and also has played professionally with several of the players that we are celebrating today. Um, Tobin Heath specifically, you grew up playing with her. We talked about Kelly as well. But what plays really stood out to you? in this entire series. Yeah, I think as a soccer fan, it's so easy to look at, um, you know, the offensive plays, the goals scored, everything like that, and just their celebrations, and wow, what a great goal. Um, but for me, you know, I was a defender, so I really look at, you know, the defensive plays, and like they say, defense wins championships, and I think this back line was solid, you know. Um, Becky Sauerbrunn cracked her head open in the final, <laughs> bleeding everywhere, got right back up and played. Abby Dalcumper did great. Uh, Crystal Dunn, Kelly O'Hara, and Ali Krieger stepping in when, when Kelly got injured. Um, um, and a listen there in goal too, you know, I think a really pivotal moment of this tournament was the uh, the penalty save uh, against England. I think it was in the 84th minute. The score was 2-1 and that's such a big moment for a goalkeeper because at that moment you either become the hero or not and she really stepped up and, and saved it. Yeah, did she ever? Were you watching like us with bated breath? Oh yeah. Playing every play along with them, <laughs> breathing yeah. it? It's kind of like you're moving a little bit, <laughs> trying to like make the ball go certain places. But yeah, it was such an exciting tournament. What is it like for you, because you have this connection with Tobin, growing up and playing with her, when you see her face on that float coming down Broadway, or I should say coming up Broadway? Oh, it's great. You know, I mean, Tobin has, has put in so much work and, and outside of team trainings and everything that she's done on her own and all the sacrifices that she's made, you know, and, and obviously at the, at the club PDA, we are so incredibly proud of her and happy for her, but, you know, she's so deserving of this, you know. And as you look at this crowd and this flood of people, it's just a little small show of support of the amount of people that are around the world and now in the U.S. that have embraced women athletes and specifically soccer players. What is that for you and what does that tell you with where the industry is going? It's great. I mean, you know, soccer is a sport that almost every kid grows up and plays. You know, you have a lot of energy as a kid, so your parents say, let me bring you to soccer and, and try to figure this out. But, you know, soccer is such a big sport in the United States, and that's great because in, in other countries, other cultures, it's it's huge. They grow up on the street playing and everything like that. Um, and I think we've lost a little bit of that. We need more, you know, free play and just play in the backyard, play in the street and stuff that's not structured. It's not at soccer practice. It's just what kids are doing on their own for the love of the game. But you know, this is obviously increasing uh, awareness and, and fans, and now everybody wants to play soccer, and that's awesome. That's right. Chris said something earlier that made me laugh about one of the fans that said, well, this only happens every four years. Well, this doesn't happen to a lot of other countries. Right. Now we're at four. Do you think we'll go for a five? Oh, crazy. I mean, eight World Cups, and we have four of them. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the goal is to keep raising the bar and raising the bar, and I'm sure, you know, these, these girls, you know, Jill Ellis said it best, most teams visit pressure, but U.S lives in it and their expectation every World Cup is to win and come home champions. So what would you say on the outside looking at this team that they need to continue to do to develop to secure that fifth spot? Yeah I, you know keep bringing in the younger players and, and getting them ready because like we said the next World Cup is in four years so 
you know, some of these players who are toward the, the end of their national team careers, we need to start getting, uh, you know, the new ones ready and working on that chemistry. And, and I think that's kind of why Jill Ellis has been criticized is because she has really focused on, on the younger crowd. But, you know, she's she's the only person to have two Women's World Cup, so how much can we really criticize her? <laughs> she's clearly got an eye, yeah. and, and she's been named Coach of the Year as well back in 2015, and we assume that it will probably happen again. What I find ironic here is that on July 10th of 2015, we were in the same spot watching this ticker tape parade. You and I got a good laugh about that. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm, you know, on Facebook tells you like four years ago on this day. So I see a lot of people posting throwbacks and just to see how much like these young kids that I coach uh, have grown in four years and now they're doing amazing things with their soccer career and, and these girls have really paved the way for them to do that. And talk, talk to me about that. This has been an opportunity for these female athletes to really be at the forefront of the conversation. Yeah, it, it's amazing. I mean, the, the biggest thing that we're looking for is role models, and, and these girls are really pushing the pushing the envelope. And the thing is that they want to leave this game a better place than when they came in. Mm. And they, they want to leave their footprint on the field, but also off the field. And they realize the impact that they have on so many kids, and, and they're really striving to just use their platform to the best of their ability and, and mm. change lives and, and change the world. Yeah, I mean, Chris and Mary, you guys heard that as we were up and down the parade route, too. All of these youngsters just raving about how great it was to have a glimpse of them. Chris and Mary, and that was something we had been talking about absolutely. watching them. Yeah, it's been so exciting to watch and talking about the footprint they're leaving. We're looking at the confetti that they're leaving. That's the footprint today. And we're taking a look at the sanitation crews. They've got the uh, brooms we're at the out. ready. They are amazing. So a salute to them today to because they're going to be cleaning all of this up. And, you know, just talking about the history of ticker tape parades in New York City starting in the 1880s. The first was in 86 to mark the dedication of the Statue of Liberty. And then in 1921, Albert Einstein became the first and only scientist to receive a parade. As for sports teams, we've got the Rangers, the Yankees, the Mets, the Giants, all receiving ticker tape parades up the Canyon of Heroes. And hopefully you've had the honor and the pleasure of being there and seeing one of your favorite teams uh, come up the Canyon of Heroes because I've been there for a couple of giant parades, a Yankee parade, um, and to sit here and watch this all unfold. I will say this, each one has their own identity and each one is unique, but they're all great, that's for sure. You know, the um, we did that whole four years ago we were having another ticker tape parade for the 2015 World Cup team and that was four years ago to the day according to Alex and Trish a few moments ago didn't know that but 20 years ago to the day 1999 Brandy Chastain with the game winning kick versus China to win the World Cup you remember that familiar scene the jersey comes off <laughs> it was just the the basically the image seen around the world of Brandy Chastain so that was 20 years ago today it seems like yesterday making her one of the oh, exactly. top 10 in goal scoring and Alex Morgan, number seven on that list. So many people yelling out Alex Morgan's yeah. name today. We're looking at the bands. They are at City Hall. They are about to greet the players as they are going to receive the keys to the city. Let's get right back to you, Jessica Moore. Mary, Chris, hi. Yes, the band playing right behind me, and it's a welcome sight for these folks. They've been waiting hours to see these women. We knew the parade was getting close when the confetti started falling. Started falling on our riser here, and I couldn't help but pick up a couple sheets. You know, for old times' sake, keep it in the memoir book. So we've got the band behind us. The girls will all be arriving here. You see the the stage set up there behind them. Mayor De Blasio and First Lady Shirley McRae will be with them. The mayor will be presenting the key to the city to the deserving world champions and as I said before the city released tickets to this event earlier in the week and the city tells us that they sold out they were free but they sold out on a first come first serve basis within minutes people from all around the country we've been meeting out here who came a lot of a lot from New York New Jersey Connecticut but really from all around the country because they just wanted the chance to see some of these women we're going to be hearing from Carly Lloyd Megan Rapino the captain of the U.S. Soccer Federation will also be talking today celebrating these women as they continue their victory tour. The, the ceremony is scheduled to begin at about 1030, so not too far from now, a couple of minutes theoretically, but we're told that it may be just a few minutes late. However, it is going to be succinct. I won't say short, but it is supposed to be succinct because these women are getting on a flight and heading to L.A. to continue their victory tour. I'll let you keep listening to the band behind me. 
silent of the crowd. We've had a DJ out here all, all morning as well, keeping the tunes going, reminding everyone to drink water and keep the sunscreen on because it is scorching out here and really not an ounce of shade to be found. But everyone I spoke with said that was not going to keep them away. They're going to be here until the very last person is off that stage. They cannot wait to see and hear from some of their heroes. A lot of anticipation as to what the women might say. A lot of talking points that they've really sort of spearheaded, the equal pay. Uh, they've been really championing a lot of causes, and a lot of people here are wondering if they're going to touch on that or if they're just going to be celebrating their victory. Either way, everyone out here extremely excited. We'll send it back to you in the house. Worst case, it's going to be extremely interesting to have the U.S. Soccer Federation and the women's team yes. on the same stage since there is currently a lawsuit one against the